Stony Forge Schnaudel from the technology firm. Today we're going to take a look at the Dump Cap UI. Neat little utility for you Wireshark people. You might want to have in your tool belt somewhere. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. I'll get right to it. I'll put the URL into the um, actual article so you can just click on it and it takes you to this website nondescript folder with just a couple of files and all you need is this dump cap UI dot executable it is a portable file there's nothing to install you can just throw it on a flash drive if you like and then when you um, copy that over to your machine or download it you will see the executable you launch the executable and this little guy pops up real simple the uh, trick here is to figure out which interface you want to capture from. You can hit the list interface button, which does the uh, T shark space dash uppercase D command. And if I look for my Wi Fi, for example, which is what I want to capture from right now, it's interface number four. So from now on, um, oops, let me slide this over a little bit. There you go. And you'll see interface number four is Wi Fi. So from now on, I need to reference it as number four. So that's what I put over here. Um, after you, do, after you do that, you can actually save your layout if you'd like, but I'm going to skip all that. Next thing you have to do is to set a spot to capture your file. I've put it on my D drive, test.pcap. You can hit the browse button and just poke around and find out where you want to put it. Uh, if you want to do other things such as packet slicing, you can also do that. Uh, I'm just going to stop the capture after 100 packets. That's what I encourage you to do so you don't mess everything up and end up with a big huge file. When this works then you can actually move on and make a bigger trace file if you'd like. Down here you can put additional capture filter information like host, space, and the IP address or the name, that sort of thing. But the other one I want to cover is this tab up at the top called schedule. So schedule you can obviously schedule when you want the capture to start, which is kind of nice. So it just goes into your Microsoft scheduler and creates a task. And I'm going to create uh, an event for 11. What time is it now? 11.02. So I'm going to do 11.03. And give it a name, test. If you've already got one or you're not sure if there's one in there already, you can also use the delete button. And it'll actually delete the task, as you can see. There you go. So it's successfully deleted, if you're not quite sure. Then you can hit the Create button. And it actually gives you the entire uh, command line that it's going to use to create the task, which is kind of nice if you want to learn how things work. Yes. And let me just slide this guy over for you. So it says the scheduled task has been created. You can just close this off. And now basically you wait for 11.03. So that's probably another 15 more seconds. Um, I'm going to just pause the video for a moment and then from there you'll see the additional dialog box that's going to appear. So I'll just pause it and I'll get right back to you. There you go. So now the uh, command prompt popped up. You can see it's capturing to that file from Wi-Fi and there's the packet counter. When it's 100 it stops, it goes away. If I go to my drive now, I'm just going to go to my drive and you can see there it is, test.pcap, click click and there's all my packets. So when you do this, the moral of the story is make sure everything works right before you do anything long term. If you want to use ring buffer stuff, it's over here. And uh, I strongly encourage you to have ring buffers based on size of file, not time. So every, for example, 100 meg, not every 30 minutes, because that could, who knows how much that's going to be. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.